this is my water pump oil pump assembly and the R1 it's a it's a dual pump one side is oil and the other side is the water pump I was not planning on disassembling and inspecting this because it seemed to be working fine but you know what it's out of the bike if I'm ever going to do it, now's the time. So I decided to go ahead, open it up, take a look at what's inside, and I'm really glad that I did. So the uh, teardown of this is really straightforward. You remove the bolts on the on the water pump side to remove the cover plate. There's an O-ring that sits in a channel in the housing, and then you can see the impeller shaft. You turn the unit over. Remove the three screws that hold on the oil pump housing cover. There's a bearing that's press fit in here. This gives you access to the outer rotor, the inner rotor, the small pin that goes through the impeller shaft, at which point you can then remove the impeller shaft from the unit. Now, uh, at this point, there's several components that are press fit into this side of the water pump. I've already removed them all, but I'll go through what's in there and how I removed it. And it was actually pretty difficult. At the very bottom here is a bearing that's press fit all the way down into this recess. After the bearing, there's an oil seal. And as you can see, this is the oil seal that was removed, and it is absolutely shot. The bearing is also completely shot. So I'm, this is why I'm glad I removed these pieces. The way you're supposed to remove this is by inserting a punch on the oil pump side, just catching the inside race of the, bear, of the bearing here and then punching it out. I had to beat on this thing like no tomorrow in order to get it out. I also used a torch to heat the outside of the housing to expand it, and it finally broke loose. To reassemble the uh, water and oil pump, um, I've gone ahead and ordered replacement parts. The first is the impeller shaft, which comes with this um, uh, rubber seal and plastic piece. You just slide them down and press them in. I'm going to be replacing the bearing that sits down at the bottom of this recess. I'm going to replace the oil seal that sits on top of that. I'm going to replace the water pump seal. This is the one that's spring-loaded. And it looks like the way this works is that the replacement part here comes with a cap. Okay, so the first step in the reassembly then is going to be to press fit this bearing down into this recess. I have a bearing press, which is going to make it real easy, but if you don't, you can drop this down in here and get a socket that fits the outer diameter so that it's in contact with the outer race. And then just, just, just tap, gently tap it all the way down till it, till it hits the bottom. But what I'm doing is... I dropped this bearing down in this recess. I heated the outside surface to expand it. Some people will also take that bearing and throw it in the freezer for a little while to cool it down and shrink it. Uh, I've got a 19 millimeter socket which is just big enough to hit the outside portion of that race. And then I'll just gently push it down to where it seats on the bottom. Uh, I just did it and it went down pretty easy. I'm just going to push it one more time and make sure it's really down. Quick visual inspection. And yeah, it looks to me like we're right at the bottom now. Alright, I've got my bearing now pressed in and the next uh, piece to install is the oil seal. The way that the factory manual says to install this is apply some tap water to the outside edge of the seal and then the open side goes against the bearing, so this flat surface is facing up. And then it says, again, find something that's the same diameter or close. This is close enough. And then tap that right down here. Now that feels 
looked like it sat down pretty good. So next step then is go ahead and gently press this cap piece on. So it looks like Yamaha sells a specialty tool just to press fit this cap piece and this water pump seal on. Um, I got lucky. I have a 27 millimeter socket that fits perfectly on the outer lip of this plate. And I'm going to use my press. And this should go in pretty easy. Again, trying to make sure I'm squared up. And I can feel it going in nice and smooth all the way. That's it. We're good to go. I'm back to my workbench uh, after having press fit all these pieces in. I've got my replacement O-ring. Impeller shaft. Again, I already put the plastic piece on here that rides on this plastic piece. You have to push through that oil seal. It's spring loaded and you can see the springiness here, if we can catch it, is just enough to allow that hole in the impeller shaft to receive this pin. So if I push the impeller shaft in just a little bit, push the pin in, and then let go, this is held on, this is held on pretty tight but certainly enough to spin. Anyway, uh, the reassembly from this point is dead simple. Well, all you need to do is um, put your O-ring on, cover plate back on, torque to the proper 7.2 foot-pounds, and then reassemble the oil pump side with the inner and outer rotor. It does say to lubricate this just with plain old engine oil, which I have ready to go. Uh, and then I'll put these pieces on. Uh, the other thing I checked is that all these ports here and the one that goes through here are clear and of any debris. So with that, simple reassembly, and this unit is ready to go back in the bike. All right, the final stage of this pump assembly is to put the oil cover, housing cover back on, make sure the two locator pins are in. And then, you gotta be careful here, there's one bolt that's bigger than the other two. I didn't even notice this on disassembly, but I'm noticing it now that I'm reassembling. And sure enough, the factory manual, it's subtle, but it shows that the longest bolt goes here, and then the two shorter ones go here and here. Torque this down to 7.2 pounds, and this pump is ready to reinstall.